violence and other kind of violence. What's good, YouTube? It's a Black Gen Z mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe, and let's get into the video. DeKalb County police have announced a second arrest now in a deadly shooting at a condo complex. Investigators say that shooting may be connected to the kidnapping of one-year-old Blaze Barnett. Investigators arrested Santana Miller last night in connection to the murder of 60-year-old Assis Hassan. The shooting happened last Wednesday. Wow, so, so this guy... It sounds like he killed an Indian guy. And this is connected to that little boy who went missing that we did a story on. Um, I think last week. So we're going to get more details on this and, and you know, we're going to break it down. Wednesday at Brandon Hill Condos on Singleton Lane. That's the same place where the SUV Blaze Barnett was in when he was kidnapped was found. Police believe the motive for the shooting is linked to Blaze's abduction, but they do not think the victim had any involvement with the kidnapping. Also, t also tonight at 11, we're hearing from the mother of a one-year-old who was abducted last week in DeKalb County. He's back home with his family tonight, but investigators believe the kidnapping is connected to a murder investigation. News at reporter Brian Hill explains. DeKalb County police arrested two people for that homicide at Brandon Hill condominiums, which is only about two miles away from where Blaze Barnett was abducted. I did ask his mother, Deanna Bray, if she knows those two suspects, and she told me no. DeKalb County police say investigators believe the motive for Thursday's shooting is linked to Blaze Barnett's abduction, but they don't think the victim had any involvement with the kidnapping. Officers have now arrested these two people for the death of 60-year-old Aziz Hassan. Wow, so... They look really rough. This guy, the scruffy beard, definitely looks like he's on demon time. Shorty right here, she got bags under her eyes. Um, tuh, They ended up taking this guy out, man. Do you have a reaction to it when you saw it on the news? Kind of, but I just didn't understand. This is video of that shooting at Brandon Hill condominiums. Deanna Bray's stolen SUV was found at the complex earlier during an intense search for the one year old who was inside the vehicle when taken. I can feel that he felt it was something going on and that he needed his family because now he's just involved with like he's loving on everybody. Prior to everything happening, Blaze didn't want anybody but me. Take a listen to part of Blaze's father's frantic 911 call moments after he was abducted. I mean, think about this. Like, they... They stole the car. They jacked the car. Took this young man. And then... They're going out and, and, and committing more crimes. I took my nephew in the house and put all my bags in the house. I came back outside, everything gone. The little boy was missing for about 36 he said he put his nephew in the house but his nephew was in the car hours before being reunited with family thursday afternoon right now clarkston police tell us they're still searching for a suspect in his abduction i think about thank god he was brought back though you know that he's not caught and i'm still nervous or whatever like that but Blaze has been the one that's taken my mind off all of that. Thankfully, the one-year-old was found at a home on Roger Street. Here's part of that homeowner's 911 call. I took her out of the car because she was caught. She had gotten out of her car seat, or she or he, I don't even know, and was crawling on the floor of my van with all the dirt. So I took her up. Wow, so they just dropped them off at a random house. I mean, these people are ridiculous. Order in my house. Bray tells me last week's nightmare has changed her perspective on motherhood. Mistakes happen just thinking before doing. I'm going to be like, you know, very careful from this day forward. Bray tells me her family is still not okay after going through that ordeal. Right now, there's a lot of moving parts and developments with this case. Stay with us for any new updates. Outside DeKalb County Police Headquarters, Brian Hill. Fox 5 News. A group of people banging on doors armed with weapons. On WSB Tonight, we're getting some new perspective on a twist surrounding the one-year-old boy who was kidnapped and found 36 hours later. Well, now police say they arrested two people who were part of a group who went looking for that one-year-old boy. Police say 
Those two people shot and killed a man at an apartment complex where the stolen SUV was found. Police say that victim had nothing to do with the kidnapping. Channel 2's Ashley Lincoln joins us live now at the DeKalb County Jail. So isn't it so weird how these two things were linked? Isn't it so weird how these two things were linked? These guys were found um, at these condos. They, they ended up killing somebody. The man and the, the woman, they end up killing somebody. DeKalb County, like I said, they're on demon time up there. And, you know, they, they're already linked to the car. They're saying that the suspect was not linked to the abduction of the kid, which obviously. But these two people who shot that, that um, or the victim rather, these two people that shot that uh, Indian man, the brother and sister that shot him. It's like they. It's almost like they're aimless, man. These people are just committing random, senseless crimes. Ashley, in the last 30 minutes, you confirmed that these two suspects are related to the baby, baby Blaze Barnett. Absolutely, George. I spoke with the mother of baby Blaze, and she confirmed with me that these two individuals, not only are they siblings, but they're cousins to Blaze's father. Now, she... Wow, so <clears throat> they're cousins to Blaze's father, and they out here cutting the fool. ...maintains she was not at that apartment complex at the night of this incident however we spoke to people who lived there and they described that night as traumatizing they were banging on every door in the building this brandon hills kind of so it looks like they were looking for the kid maybe right and they took a more aggressive approach many resident says she's too scared from last week's crime scene to be identified it's like a a whole group of people, 10, 12 people with weapons. She says her unit was one of several here at the complex where family and friends of one-year-old Blaze Barnett spent hours searching for who's responsible for kidnapping him. Wow, so they're going banging doors trying to figure out where that baby boy is. His family says he was inside of their SUV when it was stolen from in front of the family's home. This resident describing the scene at the complex as a vigilante witch hunt for his kidnapper. She says the group. And this is why you can't have mob rule. This is why when there are protests and riots and all this stuff, it never works out and it's never effective because it just makes things work. I mean, worse because people are emotional, people are riled up, and they go out and end up committing crimes to try and get whatever they feel like is a form of justice for a crime that was committed against them. We came to the complex throughout the day last Wednesday, but by nightfall, they returned more aggressive, came armed. There was people, so many meeting people, uh, banging on the door. What kind of people? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, this is what a lot of black people mean when it when they talk about, you know, policing your own community what they really mean is going out and taking somebody's life for doing something to you they call that shit get back okay i'm gonna get my get back you like you hear that all the time on not only on social media but in the hood and these rap songs and all this stuff so we got a whole bunch of brothers and sisters banging on people's doors scaring the living daylights out of them in the middle of the night Looking for this young man. They're all armed. And they want blood. It doesn't matter if you took the child or not. They want blood. And later on, I heard <clears throat> shots. The Cap County Police say one of those gunshots. And those are some rough condominiums. Rough. I mean, look at these cameras. They're taped, duct taped on. Rough. Killed 60 year old Aziz Hassan. He was shot in the back, and police said he had nothing to do with the kidnapping. He has a special needs son, a very, very nice guy. And the reason why they shot Aziz, I believe, is because he probably came out there and he's like, What are you doing? You're uh, waking up everybody, da, da 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 you know, telling them to get the hell on. And, you know, shout out to Ag Nation. He, he always says, You can't really tell some people to leave anywhere. It didn't deserve to die like that. 
Police arrested 38 year old Delarius Miller and 34 year old Santana Miller for Delarius Miller. Like, I mean, the name precedes him. This dude's delirious. <laughs> they tried to make Delarius sound good. They tried to make Delirious sound good, and they said Delarius. Like, come on, G. Like, mixing Delirious with hilarious. For his death. Barnett's mother telling Channel 2 they were friends of the family and she was not at the complex that night. Hey, I'm at Brandon Hill Apartment. The SUV y'all looking for with the baby in it? This is the 911 call recorded the day a witness spotted the family's SUV. It's the SUV part all the way in the back back here. Residents say... And you could tell that brother, you know, that was a black dude. He he called Crime Stoppers. He called the police. And he did, he, he did the right thing. So shout out to that brother right there, man. You know, a lot of times we talk about no snitching in the community and people not talking and people not, uh, you know, speaking up. And that's an example of it. So I don't want to make light of that. But these are some rough apartments. They understand the family's concern for coming to the complex that day. But leaving with a life loss is unfortunate. Yeah, you're concerned as a parent for the missing, but you have to take responsibility for your children. But this man is innocent. He probably was trying to protect his family. Ashley, a lot going on here, but let's focus back now on the kidnapping investigation of that one-year-old. Do we know if police are getting any closer to finding the actual suspect in this case? That's the big question tonight, George. Right now, police have not released any information on if they're close to a suspect or any suspect description. Of course, this is a story that we'll stay on top of and bring any updates as we get them, George. You sure will. Ashley Lincoln, Life Force. Thank you so much. Top stories in your Storm Tracker 8 weather in the first eight minutes. <laughs> eight news starts now. Good evening, and thanks for joining us for Eat News at 11. After the football game tonight, I'm Talia Cunningham. Tonight, we continue to follow the latest in last night's quadruple shooting in the city's east end. Now, two children were killed by gunfire, mm. and two men were critically hurt. Let's take you right to that scene in the city's east end. Uh, this happened right on Nine Mile Road near a convenience store. The two victims are just 9 and 14 years old. Wow. Told the 9-year-old was just an innocent bystander, and the 14-year-old, Rick Fawn. So I believe this is Richmond, Virginia. 9-year-old. Bystander, the 14 year old Raekwon, um, apparently, you know, it, it's on fire in the black community, bro. Logan, you saw him just a moment ago on your screen. Leaders from the NAACP, Richmond Mayor Lavar Stoney, and the city's police chief are now speaking out. On Did hold on, run it back. Did y'all see how few people were out there? They're calling Richmond Mayor Lavar. We got one, two, three. Four, five, six brothers and sisters who care about two kids being killed in their own community. Shout out to them. But, I mean, that's all you're going to get for, you know, black kids who are killed in the community. That's all you're going to get. Six people coming out there, maybe a couple candles and a Hallmark card. Tonight, we're also hearing from heartbroken family members now mourning the loss of a child. 8 News reporter Sabrina Shedders is live at a police precinct in the city with the latest. Sabrina, you can only imagine what these families are going through. What did they tell you? <coughs> yeah, Talia, well, family of 14-year-old Raquan Logan came together so full of emotion today and so devastated. And I, I actually know a guy named Raquan. Um... Raquan Smith, I played football with him. Now he's playing for the Bears. But, you know, we... It's like we got all of these kids out here who are just... Their lives are being lost over over foolishness, bro. Like, a lot of it is just like these social media beats, but I'm not sure in this case, but, man, this one is tragic. That some of them barely could speak through their tears. God, we call on you to do what none of us can do. Yes, yes. A sister distraught tonight, tears falling from her eyes. She said she loves her brother. 
missing her 14-year-old brother, Raquan Logan, affectionately known as Opa. <laughs> Other family members are sobbing over the long Look at her shirt, Black Queen. You know, and it's it's so sad that we have to do stories like this. But when are we going to start holding each other accountable? When are we going to start holding brothers and sisters who are out here wreaking havoc in the community accountable? Obviously, it's not them, but you know politically where they lie. So they got to take some of that onus, too. And, and they got to, you know, say, hey, we need to start voting this kind of stuff out. Logan and a nine-year-old were gunned down last night near the OMG convenience store on Nine Mile Road. Children who really didn't, who, who had given a chance to become 18 yet. Police say that nine-year-old was just outside trying to unlock a car when he was hit by gunfire. Mm. J. Minor President of Richmond's NAACP heard the gunshots. Last night over here, it sounded like a war. A growing memorial that... Told you. Told you. They ain't even get a couple candles. They got one candle. It looks like one of them crates from the crate challenge. And some stuffed animals. And flowers. <clears throat> That's it. That's all they get. No celebrity's gonna come down and say, hey, we need to stop this. Nobody's gonna speak up about it. The only person who's gonna make a video about it is me, the Black Gen Z mindset. Cause over here we actually give a damn okay over there you know they they're just trying to look cool in front of their friends and and say they down with the cause Left behind with the two children. this is ridiculous and it's ludicrous and we have got to stop now we have got to stop this gun balance two men were critically hurt but are in stable condition tonight the pattern continues Richmond police chief gerald smith and mayor labor sony addressing the violence mayor sony calling it a heinous crime we've been here one too many times the chief starting a new task force that needs and look all of their officials are black chief it's like they got a black mayor like it's crazy but we're you know we don't have representation and all this kind of stuff wow he says we'll help prosecute whoever pulled the trigger in this shooting and target repeat offenders i'm just letting those know that if you continue this type of behavior and not take the options that the community is giving you for a better life we will prosecute you we will come to you now police say there were several people walking and driving near the scene last night so if you know anything call them or crime stoppers at that event today several folks were there telling a uh, potential solution to stopping the recent violence all of those solutions are laid out in this story at wric.com for now live in richmond sabrina shutters eight news it's been a violent weekend in richmond four people were killed in just three days two of them were young children a nine and 14 year old gunned down at a convenience store on nine mile road that is where we find eight news reporter talia cunningham tonight with the very latest talia what do you know Well, Eric, Deanna, good evening, first of all. Now, we know right now there's a growing memorial out here. It's been going since Saturday. You can see it. There's flowers, candles, and teddy bears right here behind me, all in honor of those two children that were shot and killed. Okay, so they got the candles up. Looks like they brought one, two, three, four, five, five more candles. So they got six. You know, the family of the nine-year-old, they actually own this convenience store. They tell me today that this is the second family member they've lost a gun violence mm. in the city of Richmond. Today, they're just too devastated to talk on camera and even too devastated to reopen their convenience store. On Friday at 7.30, Richmond police swarmed the OMG convenience store on Nine Mile and Creighton Roads. Four people hit by gunfire. Two men were critically hurt and tragically, two young children died. Nine-year-old Abdul Rahman Hamad and 14-year-old... So, Abdul Rahman Hamad, <clears throat> obviously a Middle Eastern young man, 
Um, a lot of times we talk about, especially when this Stop Asian Hate Crime bill came up, we talk about why why is there animosity from these other communities against brothers and sisters? Why y'all following us in the store? Why y'all doing the like? We've got all that, okay? The reason for that, like I've been saying since day one, is we've been robbing the bodegas. We've been robbing the gas stations. We've been going up and shooting clerks. I mean, we've been doing that. So the Asians and the Arabs who own these uh, businesses, they don't want to give back to our community because we're we're out here and, and we're, we look at them, we're bullying them. Some of them, you know, they get street cred and they cool and all this stuff and they down. But it only takes an incident like this for, you know, their whole lives to be turned upside down. You know? I mean, this boy didn't even see fifth grade. And then the brother Roquan, another brother, it's just like, we taking out our own. Roquan Logan both died. <clears throat> Saturday, but this type of act just cannot stand in Richmond. Richmond's police chief Gerald Smith and Mayor LeVar Stoney did. We have been fighting epidemic of gun violence in this city for decades. And we have to ask ourselves when does it stop? A question many are asking as children continue to get caught in crossfire. Marquia Dixon killed at a park on Memorial Day in 2019. Three-year-old Shamar Hill Jr. shot and killed while playing outside in Hillside Court last year. And just this year, three-month-old Naziah Hill fatally shot outside with her mother. I was praying for peace. In response, officers were canvassing Creighton Court today, talking with families and business owners, checking on their mental health. A lot of times, the community has a lot of stress and anxiety about their neighborhood, kids coming outside to play, walking to your car. Sergeant Tish Edmonds has been with RPD for 21 years and tells me it doesn't get any easier. Especially with the holidays right around the corner, I cannot imagine. I've been tearful um, since Friday. I mm. came out here. I prayed over the ground. I'm wow. And these are the police officers y'all want to defund, by the way. Let's run it back. These are the police officers y'all want to defund, by the way. Black woman. She cares about the community, giving back, policing her own community. That's what it, it really looks like. Actually getting in a uniform, uniform and fighting the fight every day. <clears throat> you know, praying over the grounds, praying over the crime scene. I mean, who cares more than that? Who cares more than that? But y'all talking about defund the police. Mm. Yeah, and checked in with RPD multiple times today. No new updates in this case. We know no arrests have been made just yet. However, Chief Smith says he will find whoever did this. He also created a special task force that will help hopefully lead to an arrest, although they do need your help. If you yep, hopefully they don't defund that task force. If you know anything about this incident, you're asked to call Richmond Police or Crime Stoppers. We're live in Richmond tonight. Talia Cunningham, eat. Hey, it's school. Not good at all. Not good at all. Changed in an instant. I heard the shots started firing. Six students shot outside Aurora Central High School. It must have been like, you know, anywhere from like 30 to 50 shots. We see all the hogs, and I don't, I don't know, I mean, that this is happening. And Irene Cruz. So many shots. Got the text from her granddaughter locked inside a classroom. She texts me and she says, it's okay, Nana, I'm okay. Um, don't worry, I, I, I'm okay. Even so check this. Another school shooting, underreported. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about it. Why do y'all think that is, man? And if you know that she's okay, to see all this outside, it, it makes you like, come on, I want to take her I mean, home now. Families waited outside for hours as students sat locked inside, safe from the violence. I'm looking for Titus Morris, actually. I just... Titus? Yes. Alvin Morris. <sighs> Just wanted to hug his son. Yeah, I, I, just, I just want that sigh of relief. I'll, I'll be all right. Obviously, this is a very concerning uh, incident for for the city um, as well as for this nation. I think we're seeing it's uh, 
a public health crisis, really, when we think about gun violence anymore. Gun violence. They keep saying gun violence. It's like, bro, who's doing this? <laughs> I mean, who's doing it? Demographics of this school, 68% Hispanic, 16% African American, 5.8% Asian, 4% whites, and the rest is history, all right? The rest is other, okay? I mean, are the, are the Hispanics beefing with the blacks at the school? Is that what's happening? Like, because they're doing drive-bys. It wasn't no, oh, student comes, he's bullied, and he pulls up. No. They were looking to hit. Police believe it was a drive-by shooting. The park where it happened is just across the street from the high school. I want to thank uh, the school resource officers that were first on scene, and they applied life-saving measures in the form of a tourniquet. I mean, it's scary hearing that many, that many gunshots going off right in front of your house. One teen went into emergency surgery. The rest are expected to be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's in yeah. our gym class. He's about to come out. Would you please go get him? <laughs> Six students shot. Guidance. A whole school left shaking. Total relief. Come on, let's go home, all right? You ready? Yeah. You ready? Okay, come on. Look. Um, oh, ah, come here. Aurora police just told me investigators will be here for the next several hours. They say this is a very large crime scene. Witnesses describe hearing 30 to 40 gunshots just after 1245 this afternoon as a group of teenagers. So they shot 30 to 40 gunshots at a group of teenagers at a high school. Do y'all think it was the Hispanic gangs or the black gangs? Let me know. Was gathering at Nome Park just next to Central High School. They were all just hanging out and shots started ringing out. Must have been like 30, 40 shots. Henry Martinez lives across the street from Nome Park. The one kid that the, that they carried out on the stretcher, um, I don't know the extent of his injuries. I just know that he was screaming in pain. Aurora police say five teenagers were taken to the hospital. They range in age from 14 to 17 years old. One 18 year old drove himself to the hospital. All of them were students at Central High School. Well, I can tell you when I got the call, my heart dropped. I think as many as, as most of you felt the exact same way. And I think enough is enough. And I mm. think we need to come together as a community. This is a public health crisis. This is not all on law enforcement. We need to get out through to our kids and figure out a way to stop this. The sun yeah. <laughs> get through to the kids. I mean, that sounds good, but... I don't know, when you got these beefs embedded into social media and all this kind of stuff, it's like a wildfire. I mean, these they need to know that, yo, if I get caught, I'm finna sit down for a minute, 15 years, like 20 years. Like, that's what's gonna help. That's what's gonna work. Because at least these dudes will know, yo, I can't get caught. Like, let a lot of these things will be less brazen, right? So... Suspects took off and police are working to develop more information before releasing their descriptions. But they say neighbors describe suspicious cars and people walking near the park before the shooting broke out. And guys, we're going to stay on this. We're going to find out who did this. Definitely. And I've heard two in critical condition right now and hopefully they survive. But it's just it's just sad to see, you know, such young people willing to throw their lives away. But see, guess what? This is supposed to be a national story. Imagine if the KKK pulled up drive-by shooting at a black and brown school. Imagine the outrage. <laughs> Imagine it, it's on CNN, it's on MSNBC, it's on ABC. Like all of these channels, all these liberal channels, I mean, it's everywhere. But six kids are shot. And this story goes nowhere. It doesn't go past... Aurora, Colorado. Chief Wilson praised the first responders, including the school resource officers who provided life-saving treatments. I couldn't be more proud of them. Um, they they saved a life today, and I, I want to applaud the men and women that showed up here today. 
and Chief Wilson pleading with the community for help. She says we should all be outraged by what happened here, and she's asking for anyone that has any information, heard anything, saw anything, or may have surveillance video that shows what happened here to give our partners at Metro Denver Crime Stoppers a phone call. Their number is 720-913-STOP. You can remain anonymous and be eligible for a cash reward. Reporting live from Aurora, Deborah Takahara, Fox 31.